Uh, bring in Conservative MP Chris Philp uh, to discuss this uh, further. So, the Prime Minister, she's got a hard sell to do tonight, hasn't she? Well, it's been a very difficult negotiation. It's taken two and a half years. Obviously, there are different opinions in the country as a whole, in Parliament, and some people in the Cabinet have different views as well. But ultimately, we have to unite around the best deal we can get for the country. Uh, of course, we haven't seen the detail yet. So when Joe Johnson, we saw just there, and other people uh, call on MPs to vote against the deal, or in Joe's case, call for a second referendum, they don't actually know what's in the deal. So what Joe should have done, and what other people who are uh, sort of saying things today should do, is just calm down, read the deal, if it's published tomorrow, and then make their mind up once they've seen it. Because he was saying things like, oh, it's a bad deal for the country. Well, Joe doesn't know what, what the deal is because it hasn't been published yet. So people should wait and read it before they jump to conclusions. But, but some of it has, we believe, been leaked to Irish media. And the suggestion from that is that the whole of the UK would remain in a customs union with special provisions uh, for Northern Ireland. The DUP has come out strongly uh, against that. So have Brexiteers. Uh, Joe Johnson, a Remainer, uh, has come out and said that this is a bad deal. Well, look, it's, it's speculation. We don't know what the deal is yet. But the numbers uh, are looking what good. But what you're referring to, what you're, what you're referring to is a potential backstop arrangement, I think, which might be in place. Hopefully it won't, but it might come in place for a time-limited period while we move to our future trading relationships. The Europeans, by the way, don't want us in this backstop arrangement either. So I think you know, it's possible to make mountains out of molehills in this very febrile atmosphere. But the main message to anyone who's worried about this is just let's wait and see what's actually agreed. It hasn't been agreed yet. It hasn't been agreed by the Cabinet, still less agreed finally with the European Union. So let's wait and see what the deal is when it's published, and then we can make all of us a kind of balanced and measured judgment. And what we saw there with Joe, look, I like Joe a lot, personally, um, but I think he's jumped to his conclusion too early, and he should have just waited and read what was in the deal. Uh, okay, let's bring in Labour's uh, Stephen Doughty, who's here in the studio with us as Stephen. well. A uh, voice of calm uh, from Chris Philp here saying we need to take stock of this. We need to sit and read the deal and then make our decisions. Do you feel calm? Well, I'm sure Theresa May would like to bounce us into what isn't a deal at all. It's just simply a piece of paper that certainly doesn't deliver on uh, what was set out in the referendum and certainly doesn't deliver on what my constituents or indeed many people across the country would expect. You know, we were told to expect the exact same benefits as um, our existing relationship with the EU, it is patently clear that that is not the case. Brexit is already costing us billions that could be being spent on public services, the police and other um, key services. And we're just seeing chaos. She can't agree with her own cabinet. She can't agree with her uh, party. And she's certainly not going to be able to agree with Parliament, as has been absolutely clear today. And I've just come from a rally with thousands from across Britain, uh, every part of Britain, every walk of life, uh, people from every single party saying, we're not buying this. Uh, we want a people's vote. We want a final say on that decision. Look, this, this claim that um, the referendum campaign, the last, the first referendum campaign, uh, didn't make clear to people the risks, I don't think holds, holds water. Look, I voted Remain and I campaigned Remain in that referendum. And David Cameron and George Osborne made, and the government of the day made it abundantly clear what the risks were. They, the Treasury published those forecasts, forecasting, you know, economic problems. So nobody can say the public weren't clearly warned. And to your point about, hang on, to your point about public spending, we've just seen a budget two weeks ago which put a record amount of money into the NHS and the GDP growth figures published a couple of days ago posted really very strong growth figures. The, so this the, sort of doom the, and gloom the, 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 picture you're painting no, it's, is it's, not borne out by it's, reality. It's actually Brexit reality. Um, and in fact, our growth has now dropped to the lowest in the entire of the EU. Um, we're, last see, quarter. we're seeing um, businesses leaving. We're seeing businesses coming to me every week saying um, we're extremely worried about this situation. Uh, we're already having to uh, make decisions, cutting back on investment. But crucially, you know, we were told all those lies on the red bus <laughs> about the money that was going to be available for the NHS. Where is that? You know, we were told there was going to be extra what, money for our public services. Hang on, 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 it said 350 million. So it was a lie. Week. The yeah. actual amount of money being delivered. It was a lie. 394 million. The, the, more government, than was promised. the government can spin all more they than was like. All they like about this. Fact. The, I can tell. You, I can tell Chris a fact. The fact is that the Home Office in the last two years has spent. Um, up to half a billion pounds just on Brexit preparations, which they can't even get right. They're asking for extra money yeah. today, we were told by the senior official in the Home Office. That amount of money could have paid for four and a half thousand extra police officers on our street uh, at a time when we're seeing rising crime. The reality is, is that whatever way you voted in, in 2016, and I have family and friends who voted leave in good faith, they did so because of various promises they thought were made and because they felt left behind, they felt left behind by the government. Whichever way you voted in 2016, the reality is, is this
promised. Uh, this Brexit is going to do severe damage to our economy, to our jobs and our prospects of the future. And the people have the right to have a final say. That is democracy. People are allowed to change their minds. Uh, well, you're very clear on where you stand on this, Stephen. But the same can't be said for your party, can it? Because uh, only yesterday we had Keir Starmer saying it's not too late to halt Brexit, going against the words of your leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who said... It is too late. Well, it's happening. Jeremy said various things over the weekend. I think some of them were lost in translation in terms of the German press. But the reality it, but is that the reality leader. the reality is is that Labour Party conference, um, all parts of the Labour Party, from the trade unions to the members, um, all different wings of the party, backed a very clear position. We would not support a Tory Brexit deal that didn't meet the six tests. Uh, we would vote that down. We'd obviously like to see a general election, but if that's not possible, then it can be put to a public vote, and that Remain should be an option in that. And Keir Starmer has been absolutely clear um, in the last two days about that, um, and that is the view of the majority of Labour voters, of Labour members, and certainly of increasing numbers of Labour MPs. And the reality you get tonight, you know, these fantasies that there are Labour MPs who are going to go in and vote with the Prime Minister. You know, Labour MPs did not come into well, politics to make their constituents poorer. Well, I, don't I think, think they we've, will. I think we've, we've heard the Labour Party position there. First of all, their overriding objective is to have a general election because they think they might win it. So they're putting their party interest ahead of the national interest at this critical juncture. And secondly, for those people calling for a second referendum, they're essentially um, disrespecting and disregarding the views of those 17.4 million people, a let me finish, not. who cast their votes absolutely the first not. time. Now, I was in a minority in that vote. Absolutely I voted not. Remain and I was on the losing side. But we made very, Parliament made very clear when we had that vote that it was going to be a vote that would be respected and implemented, and it was made very clear by the Remain campaign but, but of all the issues what that, the consequences might be. But of all the issues that we discussed during that campaign about uh, sovereignty, about free trade deals, what is being leaked and what is being suggested, and, and we do have to say again, we don't know what the text uh, says, but what is being suggested tonight is that the UK will remain in a customs union. Boris Johnson making it very clear that we won't be able to do well, trade deals yeah. and we won't be able to have a say. Yeah, Boris, 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 jo Boris, Johnson, Boris Johnson and Jacob and Joe Johnson should wait and see what the deal actually says before they make those pronouncements. Wait, wait and the, the customs, and the the customs deal um, you're, you're referring to, if the leaks are correct, and you're quite right to say they are just leaks, would, would apply to a time-limited backstop um, that might occur, but probably but, won't, but, but who in, some that time limit? in some circumstances. And as I understand it, um, there will be a clear process that describes how you get out of that backstop. So it's very temporary. And I think people in the cabinet, like Michael Gove... If you Gove, end up in a backstop, if you end up needing the backstop, then that suggests that we haven't been able to reach a deal. And what's to say that uh, a little bit further down the line, we are going to be able to reach that deal and be able to get out of that backstop? Well, there is... So there, there, I, I would expect, and I would hope, and we don't yet know, there'll be a very clear process that describes how we get out of the backstop into the future trading relationships. And those future trading relationships, I hope, will maintain good trade with Europe, but also, critically, allow us to do those free trade deals with the world's largest economies, like America and China, with whom the it's, European it's Union just, just does not have a trade agreement at the moment.